will begin to to teach and will trust God to move mightily by his spirit second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 second Corinthians 6 and verse 2 hallelujah I'm teaching very briefly on what I titled the day of salvation the day of salvation he says for he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted and in the day of salvation I have succored thee he says behold now is the acceptable time or accepted time say amen he said behold now is the day of salvation so the bible tells us very clearly like we discussed yesterday that there is a time where god calls the accepted time and the bible says that time is also the day of salvation now when you when you see the word day in the bible it does not necessarily mean 24 hour timing the word day also means seasons hallelujah so when the bible says the day of this and that it doesn't necessarily mean a 24 hour time period it just means a season hallelujah so when it talks about the day of it's not just talking about a 24 hour window of opportunity but he means a time a dispensation hallelujah praise the name of the lord and very quickly i just want to charge our hearts the word salvation is very very important because most believers do not understand the scope of that word salvation when the bible talks about a man being saved or salvaged the idea of salvation um it gives an idea of being taken out of a negative situation is is a translation from one realm and one dimension of reality one dimension of possibility to another usually a negative realm a negative environment a negative atmosphere are we together so salvation is a holistic description of deliverance in every sense of the word when we talk about salvation it is not just limited to salvation or deliverance from sin in one word salvation is deliverance and deliverance does not necessarily refer to casting out demons it just means separation between you and the spirit or influence that impedes your maximizing destiny are we together so the bible talks a lot about salvation it expresses it in several ways sometimes it will use the word deliverance like it says we have been delivered and then translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son hallelujah salvation is very powerful and it is god's desire especially tonight and generally in this season that the believer in christ experiences salvation holistically are we together the apostle said that you'll be sanctified and even preserve spirit soul and body you see when jesus died on the cross the work of the cross attends to the entire tripartite nature of man unfortunately for most believers our point of emphasis is just the spirit of man reuniting with the spirit of god which is the most important but apostle peter was also teaching us and he said receiving the end of your faith even the salvation of your soul hallelujah so healing and wholeness is an administration of salvation to your body are we together now healing and restoration blessing in terms of finances material things these are dimensions of salvation and let me tell you it is god's desire that everyone in christ be holistically established that means in your lifetime your lifetime should be a complete capture of every and anything that is in god through christ if that will be your testimony tonight shout a loud amen. amen so the bible says now is the accepted time 
and he says it is the day of salvation i did mention yesterday that theologically speaking what the bible calls the accepted time started from the resurrection of jesus because you must understand that the resurrection of jesus began a new dispensation are we together yes the dispensation did not just start in the book of acts that was just the first time they had recipients of that grace corporately that means in acts chapter 2 the bible says that the spirit of god fell upon them and then they preached three thousand people and then it continued but our this dispensation of grace this dispensation of the power of god that would allow us to experience salvation holistically started when jesus christ rose from the dead and then the bible records according to paul's exegesis of scripture that when he resurrected he went to heaven and the bible says as the high priest he went to the heavenly tabernacle and he poured his blood and made atonement once and forever for us are we together and that he sits at the right hand of the father today making intercession for the saints so we know that based on the substitutionary sacrifice of christ it is important that we understand the basis what legitimizes our accessing this salvation primarily foundationally the victory of christ listen carefully you will never be able to access genuine salvation and holistic salvation if you approach it in the strength of the flesh in fact anybody who tries to deal with spiritual matters in the strength of the flesh you are already dead on arrival are we together the bible says that which is flesh is flesh and that which is spirit is spirit so for all the healings deliverances the breakthroughs the prophetic words answers to prayer will happen from tonight and all through the remaining part of this conference it is important for you to know that the consciousness of knowing that you are in the acceptable time do you know what it means to be accepted to be accepted means that god has qualified you and given you access to receive the bible says let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace until that time we didn't have the condition to be able to approach god is that you must have righteousness equal to that of jesus your righteousness must be equal to that of jesus and based on that standard the bible is clear that no man no matter how well intentioned sustains that level of righteousness and blamelessness to approach him so jesus himself imputed that righteousness unto us by believing are we together now that when we believe his report among the many things we receive is access access to the righteousness of god he says um in galatians chapter 3 he said christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law being made a cause for us for it is written cost is every man not some man every man that hangeth on a tree that the blessing of abraham the blessing of abraham is not cars and houses the blessing of abraham is justification by faith are we together that the blessing of abraham might come upon we the gentiles to the end that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith so that's what the bible says by reason of this substitutionary sacrifice why do you need to have this understanding so that the devil will not play with your mind and make you believe that you are not deserving of that which you will receive it is important for you to understand that the basis of your receiving is primarily that which christ has done as simple as this sounds there are many people who can live almost their entire lifetimes and never partake of the riches and the blessings that the faith life brings because somehow we believe that that which christ has done even though we agree mechanically we have not really gotten the revelation to rest i know that there are all kinds of um, um views as to the concept of the finished work of christ you know there might be exaggerated concept concepts of it and then there are 
um, other concepts that seem to downplay that which Christ has done. I can tell you for the believer in Christ, the basis of your approaching the riches and the blessings of redemption is Jesus Christ. The moment you take him out of the way, you have no authority in the spirit. Because you see, our authority in the spirit is derived. Derived from our oneness with Christ. Hallelujah. Give us Ephesians chapter 6, please, and verse 10. If we can see it from Amplified, it's important that I establish this. Ephesians 6, 10, Amplified. Let's read together if you can see it projected. Ready? One to read. In conclusion, it says, be strong in the Lord. It says, be empowered through your union with Him. Draw your strength from Him. That strength which is boundless might provides. So, the believer's strength is based on the consciousness of your oneness with Christ. Hallelujah. This is very important. So, as I pray for the sick, I am aware that Joshua Selman, as a person unassisted by these spiritual privileges, will only be wasting your time. But then when you understand, it is not just that I am representing God. I am one with Him. Are we together now? That consciousness of oneness is what releases the power of God in and through the believer. So on one hand, I am conscious that I am sent. And he said, when I sent you, lackest thou any? And he said, none. So when you are truly sent, there is no lack. There is no insufficiency. There is no bankruptcy of capacity. When I sent you, not when you went. But then the Bible also tells us that we are one. The implication of oneness, listen, the implication of oneness can be seen from a tree, the vine and, you know, the, the root. You see that now. The root receives from the earth and the vine does not need to worry about touching the earth. It is comfortable that the root is there. It will draw the nutrients eventually the vine, the branches will experience it and the riches of all that has happened will be seen on the branches as the fruits come out. Are we together now? You never pluck the fruit from the root. Yet without root, you cannot have that fruit. So this is how it is. I am not only conscious of being sent, I am conscious of that oneness. The Bible says, and the Lord walking with them, confirming the word with signs following. Hallelujah. So it is true that now is your acceptable time, the day of salvation as the Bible puts it, but that should take you immediately to look unto Jesus. Are we together? That is the basis. He is our access point as far as accessing the riches of the kingdom and the spirit life is concerned. The moment you take your attention from Jesus, you do not have any legitimate ground to access anything in the spirit again. The assignment of the Holy Spirit, like Jesus told us, is to direct you to Jesus. This is the reason why the Holy Spirit has concealed his person. Because his ministry is to see that Jesus the Christ is revealed. Is someone learning? The Bible tells us that we do not yet see all things under his feet. Hebrews chapter 2, it says, but we see Jesus. That is the hope that we have. That our dominion, even though it may not seem experientially to be a fact, but that because we see Jesus, that pattern man, the possibilities that happen in and through his life, it is on the strength of that that we are able to ride through triumphantly to know that like he conquered death, like he conquered hell, sin, sickness, and every other thing, the basis of our victory in this kingdom is Jesus hallelujah so the bible says now is the accepted time and he says in that acceptable time you must also know that it is the day of salvation the day of salvation what does that mean i'm going to be sharing with you very quickly prophetically this is a prophetic message to you and then to the body of christ as we look forward to the return of christ there are three levels of salvation. Listen carefully. There are three levels of salvation that we must experience. It is the acceptable time, 
and we must experience these three levels number one the first level of salvation is called the global harvest please write it down the first level of salvation and this in order of priority is at the heart of the father the global harvest second first timothy chapter 2 please from verse 1 to 4 the global harvest there is an agenda the entire exegesis of the gospel is about the father extending his love to a fallen man who is unable to help himself using the mediator the man jesus christ are we together the entire gospel of salvation is to this end he said i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayer intercessions and giving of thanks be made for all men reading to four for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty he says for this is good and acceptable in the sight of god let's read verse four together ready one to read it says who will have all men to be saved and to come into the knowledge of the truth two dimensions but i'm i'm, I'm concerned about the first one he says god who will have all men to be saved how many men there are certain gifts and blessings that the bible will say he gave unto some like the fivefold he gave unto some apostles prophets evangelists teachers pastors but when it has to do with salvation it is in the mind of god that everyone who is on earth be given a chance and an opportunity to hear the gospel there's no time it's a miracle service tonight to teach on the gospel but let me summarize for you what the gospel is many people do not know what the gospel is yes the gospel is good news but what is good about the news as the average believer what exactly is the gospel and most believers will be at a loss they will just say jesus died you better give your life to him or if you don't well i leave it to you when he comes you know and all kinds of things is the reason why we are not effective let me tell you very quickly what the gospel is the gospel is the revelation of the father's love the revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus his son not jesus an angel not jesus a footballer jesus his son it's important we understand which jesus are we together the revelation of the father's love that is revealed through the substitutionary sacrifice of uh, jesus christ man and creation being the object of that love that means salvation is not limited to men alone salvation should affect men and the entire creation the bible says in romans chapter 8 when you read from verse 18 he says i reckon that the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us verse 19 says for the earnest expectation of the creature awaited the manifestation of the sons of god when you now read the verses after he says for creation was subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him that subjected the same in hope and when you read he now says that even creation shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to come into the glorious liberty of the children of God so it is not just men it is the entire creation a revelation of the father's love Jesus Christ being the mediator the one who acted out that love in death are we together that if you believe that report what report that the father you so much he gave then his only begotten son to die for you why did he have to die for you because without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin as powerful as god is he did not cast sin out of man he had to go through the requirement that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin so when i believe that message the bible tells me that among the many things i have access to 
is the life of God. We call it Zoe. Many call it eternal life. The life of God is a quality of living, a, an all-surpassing, indestructible life. The very life of God imparted to you. And that happens by and through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is literally the life of God. It's not that He brings it. He is the life of God. The Bible says, And he who is joined to Christ is one spirit, and that if you do not have that spirit, you are none of His. Is someone learning now? Very, very basic elementary kingdom teaching 101. It is amazing how many believers and respectfully even pastors, they cannot give a sound exegesis of the gospel. No wonder believers are very powerless. We talk about prosperity, we talk about several things, but the foundation, according to Hebrews chapter 6, the Bible lets us know that there are six foundational teachings that a believer must have and be grounded in. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 6, it tells us, it says, leaving these elementary things and all these foundational things, repentance from dead works and of baptism, six of them, he says, let us go into perfection. There are many things that if you do not know, you cannot command power and authority in the kingdom. And you see, the realm of the spirit, knowledge translates to light in the realm of the spirit. Demons and principalities and powers can know where you stand by the light that emanates from you, which is a testament of the knowledge that you have. Are we together? When they saw the sons of Sceva, they said, Jesus we know, Paul we know. Paul did not just cast out demons because he wanted to. You see, jesus built the church upon light revelation he said upon this rock the rock is not peter upon this structure i will build my church that everything you obtain must come from revelation he said who do men say that i am don't forget the context it was a context of identity and revelation he says we do not know who you are peter said i know who you are you are christ the son of the living god he said Simon Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And he said, I say unto you, thou art Peter, and upon this structure I will build my church. Revelation, primarily the revelation of him crucified as Savior, as Lord and Christ. That was the gospel of Peter on the day of Pentecost. That this same Jesus you crucified has now been exalted to be both Lord and and Christ and the Bible says when they had it they were caught to the heart and they said men and brethren what should we do he said repent for the remission of your sins and then you shall receive this gift he says for the promise is unto you and to your children to your children's children as many as are far off even those whom the Lord will call that was what brought the harvest of 3,000 people why am I taking time to tell you this the body of Christ needs to go back and understand the gospel evangelism will be a waste of time if the gospel is not understood there is intelligence to kingdom advance not only spirituality we must be able to defend this faith most believers if we random pick believers right now and ask them defend your faith what did jesus die for did you ask him to die you will be surprised that many believers do not know including we men of god we know about miracles we know about prosperity these things are not wrong you cannot win a lost world when you are lost yourself you need to come out of that confusion what is the gospel what is our message this has nothing to do with being a preacher or being an evangelist now is the day of salvation that also means now is the day when we get clarity and precision as to what the gospel truly is. The Bible says in Romans, very quickly, let's rush, Romans chapter 10 from verse 8 and I'll read down to 13. Please give it to us very quickly. This is Paul mentoring the church in Rome and Paul gave a very balanced in intelligent structured approach to being saved that means anybody on earth out of the eight billion people and counting whoever did not pass through this process we have a right based on the integrity of scripture to say that person is not saved you see because there is a serious problem in the body of christ when everybody says i'm saved if someone tells you i'm saved or born again as we know there's nothing you can say again 
and some people actually believe they are saved but based on the integrity of scripture you are not saved you are not saved by visions you are not saved by feeling are we together there is a structured modus operandi there is a spiritual protocol remember the acceptable time the day of salvation is also the time of the global harvest where we will see harvest across nations like never before but it cannot happen through the hands of a weak and limited believer most believers have not been properly mentored to understand the gospel even many who are planted in evangelical ministries really do not understand the gospel they do not even know how someone gets saved you just say repeat after me and the person what am i repeat say you better talk now you are the one who wants to be born again say lord jesus i am a sinner and the person what are you saying i mean i'm a sinner did i offend you i'm all right i'm fine with my life sinner of what where say i accept you and the person okay i accept you say all right you are born again the person says, is this it i don't even understand what i did romans 8 but what saith it? He said, The word is nigh thee, in thy mouth and in your heart. Please say mouth, say heart. These two important components have to be involved for salvation to be real in your life. Your mouth and your heart. The Bible says that is the word of faith which we preach. Verse 9 that if thou shalt confess with your mouth the lordship of jesus and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead he says thou shalt be saved 11 10 now for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation the word soteria is an all-encompassing word the word there is deliverance in all its ramifications first spirit and then your mind your body and every other capture of that word deliverance whether financially your health that will be experiencing this night it says for the scripture said whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed verse 12 it says for there is no difference between the jew and the greek the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him not all that need him all that call upon him they verbalize their desire in and through their confession it says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord whosoever whosoever means european whosoever means american whosoever means a yoruba person an Igbo person a hausa person whosoever means male or female educated uneducated it is amazing how god made this 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 template simple as a commitment to see that all men are saved without excuses you cannot access spiritual power without being filled with the holy spirit and subscribing to the patterns that have been given of prayer fasting consecration the word of god but when it has to do with salvation all you need to do is to come as you are understand the gospel in its simplicity and to believe let me tell you ladies and gentlemen we are going to see a harvest like never before as God grants us grace to travel from region to region, man of God, I want you to know that behind all that we do, primarily, is to be able to reveal Jesus to the nations. Not just that they are aware that he is there. No. We need them to be more than be aware. We need them to come to a point where they will submit to his lordship before you talk of discipleship and mentorship and maturing believers they have to be in the fold first are we together there are many people who are discipling unbelievers they are not saved it's a total waste of time because the holy spirit is not in them the bible says the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit that's why they keep laughing at spiritual things and you are wondering is it that these people do not receive they are not saved i have the privilege that god has given me and you do not know how honored i am to contribute to making this global harvest work let me tell you those who will be in the will of god in this end time those who will participate in the global harvest they are the people who will receive such a rich investment of his presence power prosperity 
because he desires that all men be saved that includes your father in the village that includes your mother that includes your stubborn son that includes your wayward brother you don't know where he is but god desires that he is saved most people will prefer to prosper most people will prefer that their churches grow than the global harvest become a reality let me tell you the truth i love jesus christ and i love men and i desire i rather fail as a person if need be and let it be that the global harvest becomes a reality that is more profitable for me hallelujah it is true so when he grants us access to the nations it is not just for show it is not just for miracles the reason why miracles signs and wonders come primarily is to reveal the love of jesus these are these are tokens when god makes the miraculous happen in the midst of his people it is because he is using it to draw men to himself please i want you to leave this place tonight with a renewed orientation that no matter what you do in and through your life if the global harvest is not captured in your vision every other thing you are doing does not have that signature of god's attention i can tell you i can tell you where god's attention is wherever souls are not just souls blindly speaking men and women who need jesus men and women who need a preacher the bible says when we read verse 14 give us romans chapter 10 and verse 14 i pray god is speaking to someone already it says how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed so the problem is believing it says and how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher 15 he says and how shall they preach except they be sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace that bring glad tidings or glad tidings of good things i desire that my world will see jesus know jesus and receive jesus and for as long as God grants grace, I will not be silent. I will always worship you as long as I am breathing. I will so now is the acceptable time for the global harvest like never before from nation to nation ladies and gentlemen you will see people rise up in the body of christ that will supposedly come out of nowhere because god is desperate for men and there are people who may not be much but they say lord if you can use whatever you see i am not only available i am usable and god is going to use people like gideon and he will do mighty things some of you are listening to me you are looking at yourself and saying i am so incapacitated can god do much you just hand yourself over to him like the alabaster box and watch what he can do with you hallelujah it is his will that all men be saved you are not part of this global harvest you are not in ministry i don't care what you are doing you are not part of this global harvest you are not in ministry apostle but i'm a counselor congratulations provided your counseling has a connection with global harvest I am an entrepreneur all that is absolute nonsense until i can find where it connects to the program the thy kingdom come is the project every other thing you, listen every other thing is only a subset so while you are in the bank while you are you know preaching while you are a prophet and apostle whatever you are make sure you have it at the back of your mind that the end of all these is that men be saved and that jesus be glorified this is what gives credence and value to our pursuit. Every other thing is mundane until we can find kingdom come in that pursuit. Is someone learning? So in the day of his salvation, the first level of salvation we must press to 
is the global harvest and we are praying that god will raise laborers everywhere from from nigeria to europe europe that is experiencing a decline we are praying that god even from that soil that he will raise men and women when you see when the church scattered in in in, in the book of acts everybody went and it was an opportunity they didn't just run away out of fear what looked like fear was an opportunity for the gospel to, to spread not trouble to spread not just denominationalism the gospel are we together number two for sake of time now is the day of salvation what is the second level of salvation are you ready oh dear i wish i had time i would have shown you that this coming of christ we talk about eh you know it is true that jesus is coming soon but most believers have not read their bibles you will be surprised that our generation will pass and another generation will come and jesus would not yet have come because the coming of jesus is not just controlled by him the coming of the gospel of jesus is controlled by the gospel the bible says in matthew chapter 24 jesus began to speak with the people are we together now and there are all kinds of theological debates around that and he made a statement i think verse 14 for sake of time just give it to us quickly i just felt stirred in my spirit not to just brush it off you know just to make sure that you get to see it. matthew 24 14 he says all these things you hear wars and rumors of wars nation rising against nation he said they are the beginning of the bad pains ask any woman who has given birth there are times that you can have that for days you go to the hospital and they say you're almost there you go back home and you can go back home for one week sometimes even one month are we together so no matter who fights who listen jesus is not going to return because he's afraid of the conflict on earth he's returning as the king of kings and the lord of lords it is not the chaos in the world that is bringing him he's not coming like trying to settle quarrel between two people say, okay i'm finally here no we have all kinds of ideas and it came because our mentorship is not structured i'm speaking to the body of christ now it's important for us to understand another error is that he's coming like a thief in the night it's in your bible he's not coming like a thief in the night to believe us no the bible says you are not in the dark that that day should overtake you as a thief he said the coming of jesus will be like the days of noah listen 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 as you're clapping just make sure you listen many people clap and but then sometimes we don't get this thing just listen and understand are we together now the flood did not take noah by surprise he prepared for it and God closed the door by himself. Hallelujah. So the Bible says 14, and this gospel, this is truly, it doesn't mean those other signs are not there. Don't go around harassing men of God because you see, this is what believers do with knowledge. The proof of transformation is love, not just enlightenment. If your enlightenment does not attach, is not attached to love, then it's, it's, not, it's not a fruitful, it was not the Holy Spirit that trained you. Don't go around harassing people and say, I just learned something new. You've been teaching rubbish for years. No, that is immaturity. Sometimes we say these things because we want to help the body of Christ rise to a greater level of stature. When God helps you to see clearer, you must garnish your knowledge with love. The same way God was patient with you until you came to a level of revelation, you must also forbear as he brings the body into maturity. Are we together? He says, and this gospel of the kingdom, is that in your Bible, shall be preached in all the world for a witness. He never said they must receive him, but that there has to be a witness that everyone was given an opportunity because whoever did not hear the gospel cannot be judged. No. No. It is he that does not believe who is condemned already. There will be another standard of judgment for those who never had the opportunity to hear the gospel. It is those who were given an opportunity to make Jesus Lord of their lives and they willfully rejected him. Those ones have been condemned already based on their decisions. This is the reason why we do everything that we do in singing, in preaching, in worship 
acting drama ministry whatsoever to the end that souls be saved this is very 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 important i just needed to stress that hallelujah the bible says in second peter 3 and verse 12 second peter 3 and verse 12 it says looking forward to is that in your bible i just needed to show you that the coming of christ is not just dependent on his will or desire alone there is a protocol to his coming apostle peter who was mentored by jesus directly he said looking forward and hastening unto the coming of the day of the lord it is the church the church is the light of the world that means the definition of darkness is the world without the church are we together now as long as the church is here the man of sin cannot gain dominion it's impossible it then corrupts our identity as light so what withholds darkness is not the laws and policies is the presence of the church the antichrist can never manifest he can be there as a person and as a system but until the church is taken away he cannot manifest what then is the excellency of light over darkness john 1 5 the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not hallelujah so three levels of salvation now is the acceptable time for the global harvest please look at me you are in this church you are in this city it is important to find out how to participate in this global mission it can be through your preaching it can be by standing to support those who go are we together now yes it is very important do you know there are believers that if they are to be assessed based on contribution to kingdom come they are as good as dead there is nothing about their lives their resources their influence is not playing any role whatsoever number two very quickly now is the accepted time the second level of salvation that you should experience in a season and a moment like this is called territorial salvation territorial salvation so the first level of salvation is the global harvest are we together that all men have an opportunity to hear the gospel and to receive Jesus the second level is called territorial salvation this is where the Spirit of God and the spirit of revival invades territories like Nigeria listen carefully that should immediately tell you that based on this prophetic timing Nigeria like many other African nations are at their Kairos moments territorial salvation territorial salvation territories can be saved not just individuals an example of this is found for sake of time in Jonah chapter 3 the Bible talks about a land called Nineveh it was not just about individuals God wanted the whole land to be saved and he sent a man called Jonah Jonah knew something about the mercy of God and he ran away till he got into the belly of the fish now he repented and then you know the fish brought him out give us verse verse um what do we start with now let's start with verse one let's see how god will help us the word of the lord came to jonah a second time saying to arise go to nigeria that great nation and preach unto it what i have told you he desired the nation to be saved he said jonah arose and went to nineveh according to the word of the lord he said nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey verse 5 jonah began to enter the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet 40 days and nineveh shall be overthrown verse 5 so the people of nineveh believed god and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth as a result of the effective ministry of a man are we together the bible says the greatest down to the least of them verse 6 for the word came unto the king of nineveh and he arose this is is important for a king's heart to be malleable because you see a king a territory will be a reflection of the conviction of any king he says and he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and he sat in ashes verse 7 he says and he caused it to be proclaimed 
and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man or beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed nor drink water. What a man. He says, But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yea, let them turn everyone from his evil way. That means a whole nation can repent. A whole nation can come into that consciousness that we have sinned against God. Are we together now? Verse 9 and 10. Let's finish. It says, Who can tell if God will turn and repent and turn away his fierce anger that we perish not? Verse 10. And God saw their works that they turned from their evil way and God repented from evil and he had said that he had said he would do unto them and he did it not listen let me tell you the truth territories can be saved there is no nation and there is no territory that cannot experience salvation hallelujah now is the appointed time now is the appointed time and i'm saying this prophetically to nigeria and many other african nations now is the appointed time in second chronicles chapter 7 from verse 13 very popular scripture second chronicles 7 and verse 13 please write it down it said if i shut up heaven that there be no rain or if i command the locusts to devour the land nor if i send pestilence among my people let's read 14 together if my people which are called by my name shall humble humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways he says then will I hear from heaven I will forgive their sins the last sentence I will heal their land not just their body a land can need healing when you see a sick patient you don't leave that patient the way he is a territory can be like a patient and there are nations that are in ICU I'm telling you prophetically speaking In Isaiah chapter 62 from verse 1, Isaiah 62 verse 1, the second level of salvation, territorial salvation. For Nigeria's sake, I will not hold my peace. And it says, for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof. Come on, someone loves this nation. Shout amen. amen. Until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. Let me tell you the truth. In the midst of the darkness you see happening in Nigeria and across Africa, I want to bring you a prophetic message of hope. God is still in the midst of his people, working out redemption to bring salvation. Not just politically. Politics is there, has its place. But let me tell you, make no mistake. There is a covenant that God has with Africa. There is a covenant with God has with, that God has with Nigeria. Abraham told the angel, it's a paradventure. If I find ten righteous people, will you destroy that land? He said, for their sake, I will not. For our sakes and the sake of the covenant that God has with us, we know that our land will be spared. He said, destroy it not, for there is a blessing in it. Destroy it not. So it does not matter what prophecy people bring and all the things that people say. I can tell you by the authority of scripture. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. No matter what happens, the jealousy of God has been invested in the continent of Africa. I hope prophetically, Africa is that continent that will usher in the return of Christ. We may not seem to have all the technological advancement as at yet. We may not be a leading player as far as the nations is concerned. But there is what we have of spiritual substance. What we are exporting is something money cannot buy. It's beyond oil. It's beyond gold and mineral. We are that bride. We are, we are that, that, that. Hallelujah. Do you believe this? So that we don't just say now is the accepted time. You have it at the back of a day will come. You will be proud of being an African. A day will come. You will be proud of being a Nigerian. That rejected stone, that rejected stone will soon become the chief cornerstone. 
and it will happen in our lifetime in the name of Jesus Christ we are they that dwell in a land whose rivers divide there is prophecy upon us hallelujah do not weep I know that as it is it looks like darkness is everywhere politically there's 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 instability economically it looks like things are going down but i want you to know that in the midst of this there are people who have held on to the four horns of the altar according to ezekiel chapter 22 that they will pray say i sought for a man there are people who are praying and god is walking we may not see it yet but make no mistakes the god of heaven is walking the god of heaven is walking and this is not it's not something that is a regional thing everybody has a role to play the north the south the east and the west there are men that god is raising hallelujah you believe that so we have the global harvest the first level of salvation number two territorial salvation you may be watching from whatever nation i want you to know that is your responsibility to walk in partnership with the holy spirit to see to it that your land and your territory comes under the influence the governing influence of the christ if we're together say amen, amen. and then number three the third and the final level of salvation is called personal salvation personal salvation there is not just limited to your receiving jesus christ in joshua chapter 21 please give us 43 to 45 joshua 21 this happened to israel but then it can be personalized it says and the lord gave joshua selman all the land which he swore to give unto his fathers and he possessed it and dwelt there in 44 he says and the lord gave him rest round about someone prophesy to yourself say rest round about one more time say rest round about rest round about is a holistic capture of the salvation of god it's a covenant of peace they say nothing missing and nothing broken where god supervises every area of your life and begins to sort you out you see in second kings chapter 5 the bible talks about a man called naaman he was a valiant man in war the bible says he was the captain of the syrian army he was a great man even the bible attested to the fact that this was a great man he said but he had not experienced holistic salvation there was an aspect of his life that was yet to be sorted out he says he was leprous then when you read verse 14 give us verse 14 second kings 5 verse 14 he says after he dipped himself he went down seven times according to the sayings of the man of god the bible says his flesh came again someone say again again is a powerful prophetic word again means it was once correct and then something happened and the god of heaven is able to restore is that true again like unto the flesh of a little child and he was clean listen to me tonight is going to be a quick one as we pray don't sit down clapping and smiling over what god has done we have thanked him for it but the remaining part of your life you are going to say lord this is the the time of salvation thank god for the fact that i have a job i celebrate you and i thank you but father ministry is not working give me rest round about are we together now tonight is not a time for you to keep quiet there must be an area in your life like naaman and this is your chance to cry and say god you visit me grant me rest round about the bible says in john 16 and verse 24 john 16 and verse 24 jesus is teaching and he says hitherto you have asked nothing in my name he says ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full believers hear me there is something called the fullness of joy now you don't need testimonies and results to have joy you can have joy even in the midst of pain but you need testimonies and the manifestation of god's hand to have the fullness of joy in the name of jesus 
it says you have turned my morning to dancing you have turned my sorrow to joy i'm speaking to someone prophetically that area of your life that has been an issue of concern you have worshiped with tears you have worshiped even while crying the lord god of heaven is about to arise like a mighty terrible one and he will grant you rest round about hallelujah give us genesis 24 and verse 1 i want you to read it prophetically genesis 24 and verse 1 and abraham was old and well stricken in age and the lord had blessed abraham in all things someone prophesy say all things all things i know you can serve god without a job but you will serve him better with a job i know that you love god beyond money it's not about money but what happens when he blesses you is someone listen when it's time to pray i want you to be angry in your spirit i've shared with you three levels of salvation yes we are praying for the global harvest we desire to see souls safe across nations we love our nation and our continent and we will keep contributing our quota in prayer prophecy vision and responsibility but let me tell you the truth god is so meticulous he wants to come to you as a person hallelujah the Bible teaches us from the life of Nehemiah. Remember the Bible says the things that are written are for time, that they are for our learning, so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. That means every story in the Bible is an adumbration. It is a revelation, a foreshadowing of something that reveals the character of God. Are we together? The Bible talks about a man called Nehemiah. He was a cup bearer of the king. And Nehemiah was there serving, but his heart was disturbed. Even though he was in the palace it was not well with him and his family the temple in jerusalem the, the jerusalem wall was not yet built and the king saw his countenance and said why are you not with joy i do not see joy and happiness and gladness and he said oh king how can i be in that state when this and that is happening to my people and the king granted his request he wrote a letter to all the governors and said whatever support he needs someone say fullness of joy that means as a result of this conference many of you will be seeing god arise in ways you have not seen before because you see you have proven to him that you love him beyond things you have proven to him that you love him beyond children beyond a wife beyond a husband you have proven to him that you love him beyond money now let him show you he will bless you and show you how to serve him in the midst of those things he that told you have asked for nothing I know that the cancer, the news of cancer is there and yet you continue to cry and worship in the midst of it. But let me tell you the truth. The healer does not just want to celebrate you in pain. He wants to grant you access to the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Now is the acceptable time for the global harvest now is the acceptable time for territorial salvation and now even this night is the acceptable time for my personal salvation i don't know about you but let me prophesy to myself my personal salvation rest round about in the name of jesus this is the prophetic word god gave me not just for you but for the body of christ all our walk of morrow is turning things around. All our walk of morrow is turning things around. All our walk of morrow is turning things around for my good. Sing one more time prophetically. All our walk of morrow is turning things around. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, it said we were like them that breathe. For someone you will wake up by next week and 
watch doors open and say, God, what is the meaning of this? Did I ever believe that by December you would have visited me? You have turned my morning to dancing. You have turned my sorrow to joy. Now, listen, please. Hear me. Please do not let the devil fool you and, and stop you through ignorance from receiving. It is already established that we love God more than things. It is already established that it is not the presence of things that will make us love him. But in his benevolence as king, as father, he has decided to arise from his throne, to shake up himself and see to it that you have the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Imagine what happens to you if those drugs and those medications because of that terminal disease you're spending five five hundred thousand every week and this night this moment that leaves do you know what that money will do think of what it will do for your children now is the acceptable time and the bible says in that acceptable time you have a responsibility what is your responsibility thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion you will change that word zion to your name thou shall arise thou that sittest in the heavens arise and have mercy upon joshua selman for the kairos time the time to favor him yet the set time is come someone lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice and begin to pray someone pray someone pray thou shall arise thou shall arise Give him no rest until he establishes your life, your family, your territory. Someone is praying. Rest round about. Rest round about. Rest round about. The fullness of joy. Rest round about. He that told you have asked for nothing. He says, ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. Are you praying? Are you asking? Ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. Shabra gata baka tosta leka parusia tapa. Ekra gata bosko to paratusia ta. Ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. Sabra kete parusa pegetos. Sabra kete paruska lepras kadi balatos. Sabra kata barato kosobra kete balakotias. hallelujah hallelujah please be sensitive psalm 68 my god i sense such a strong anointing in this place psalm 68 please give us from verse one let god arise he says and let his enemies be scattered let them also that hate him flee before him verse two as smoke is driven away so drive them away as what melted before fire so let the wicked perish at the presence of god verse 3 he says but let the righteous be glad let them rejoice before god yea let them exceedingly rejoice someone say in the name of jesus i decree and declare that this is my season of victory my season of rejoicing Therefore, O oh God, arise. 
arise in your vengeance arise in judgment open your mouth and begin to pray over the works of darkness that fight the integrity of your speakings in my life please pray oh god arise mention the name of your family oh god arise mention the name of your spouse oh god arise mention your ministry mention your business oh god arise mention the name of your corporation mention the name of nigeria mention africa mention your nation oh god arise thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion thou shall arise and have mercy upon the oasis thou shall arise and have mercy upon joshua selma for the time to favor her yeah the kairos moment is here Hallelujah. Please don't be tired. Isaiah 43 and verse 18. I just had this word in my spirit. 43 and verse 18. This is a prophetic word that God is giving someone. No matter what has happened from January, the losses, the pain, the disappointments. I know you fasted and it looked like things have not lined up. He said, remember ye not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Verse 19. He says, behold. The word behold means conceive as a reality in your spirit. I do a new thing. Someone open your mouth and begin to declare. Lord, do a new thing. Do a new thing. Do a new thing. Let it be another story. Not like before again. Behold, I do a new thing. 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 Now is the acceptable time to do a new thing. Now is the acceptable time to arise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, please, I want you to listen very carefully. Please listen. Within the few minutes, it's going to be very, very fast. We're going to trust that the glory of God will rest in another dimension in this place tonight. Realize that in Christ, you have been accepted. That means there is no reason why you should not receive. Number two, I want you to know that tonight is the night where you insist that...